stampers and thanks for joining me today. Today's card is not only a beautiful watercolor, but it's a very stinking cool technique. It is the double impressions folder technique where we'll be combining the square lattice with the designer frame in the middle and then stamping in it. Creating what looks like a layer and a frame on top of your textured embossing, only it's really all one panel. Let's get started. Because we're doing watercoloring, we're going to want to use the Stampin' Up! Cotton Press watercolor paper. This is key uh, because I tried some confetti paper from Stampin' Up! which is also good for watercoloring, but it picked up some of the texture on the paper from the, the square lattice and it really just did not look as nice. So the watercolor paper is important. First thing we're going to do is emboss it with a square lattice folder. So go ahead and place that inside. That folder gets sandwiched between two cutting pads and placed on tab one of the multi-purpose cutting platform and then just crank it through your Bake Shop machine. This alone is very cool. It adds just some awesome texture either side. It's just awesome. Next up is our designer frames. Now this is actually two different frames. I'm going to use the rectangular one just to give you an idea of what would happen here. If I was just to run this through the Big Shot machine over the textured paper, here's what would happen. It would flatten out this entire section. And we don't want to do that, although, you know, that could be a cool look for something else. What we want is just this frame section to be embossed. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take some of, this is Stampin' Up's Longboard Chipboard. So because the chipboard is thicker than cardstock, we're going to use one cutting pad instead of a sandwich, and then we're going to have our chipboard inside of our impressions folder, place it on top of the multi-purpose cutting platform, and crank it through. And you see that gives us the impression on our chipboard. And then you're just going to take a pair of scissors and trim as close as you can around the edge. So you can see it doesn't have to be perfectly cut. This is going to be the key from turning this into this. I'm going to put a little snail on the back of that and I'm going to actually stick it on top and it really doesn't matter which side you put it on but it's on top of the folder, not on the inside. Then we're going to take our square lattice panel, line that up so it's in the center, and then we're going to give that the same big shot treatment we just did. It's on top of the multi-purpose platform, so that's tab two. We're going to have our sandwich with our chipboard on top, and then one cutting pad on top of that and crank it through. And this time, when she comes out, look at We've only made the impression where the chipboard is on our impressions folder. And honestly, this looks good on either side. <laughs> it's hard to say which one's, which one's upside down because they both look cool and you could use either side here. And that chipboard is what made the difference between this and that. Now for some watercoloring. We'll be using the Always Thankful stamp set from the brand new holiday mini catalog. I'm taking the pears. I love this. I love the sketched look. Stamping it in some stays on permanent ink because we're watercoloring and that's wet and we don't want the ink to bleed. Stamping it right in the center of that frame. I'm just going to layer this on some scratch paper. We'll be using one of the Stampin' Up! Aqua Painters. These are fantastic. You have these great tubes that fill with tap water. Just twist the tap on and you just squeeze this handle to control your water flow. And I always work with scrap paper so I get exactly the look I want. So I'm going to use a little Lucky Limeade. And what I'm doing here is I'm squeezing the lid of the classic ink pad and then when I open it, I've got a little pool here of ink that I can just lift off with my aqua painter. And then I'm going to paint. I'm painting the shaded areas of the pear first and I'm intentionally leaving white space on the lighter areas of the image. The white space is going to make this realistic, so try not to color in the entire image when you're doing watercoloring. If your brush is too wet, simply use your scratch paper to dry it off. And there's our pears. We're going to do the same thing with the soft suede. We're going to squeeze that so it's pooled in the lid. Pick up the color, and because the image is shaded more on the right hand side, I'm going to start on that side and pull the color over to the left, not all the way, so there's white space on the left. And I'm going over the right hand side a couple of times to make that a little bit darker. And then just pulling a very light edge around it, and that's just going to make it pop. Just gorgeous. I'm going to use this snail, some snail to attach this 
to either Lucky Limeade or Pear Pizzazz. I have Pear Pizzazz today. And then I attach some Lucky Limeade ribbon over the top with some snail adhesive. That layers on a panel of soft suede. And we're gonna finish it off with some of our vintage tags. Love these. If you look real close on there, you can see they're actually sparkly. So cool. The words are from the Teeny Tiny Wishes stamp set because this stamp set is great for anything. I just took the sweet from the Sweet Treats. You can either color this with a marker or I just actually used the side of the stamp set just by stamping it like that, just so I got the word sweet. Then I actually cut off the top of the ribbon that came with it and just tied that in a little knot on top. And then a stamp of dimensional on the back of that. And that just sticks on there. And it's so sweet! Isn't that awesome? Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this really cool technique.